Now that you know how to send emails from Node.js, let's actually integrate SendGrid into the Task Manager application. Right now, we're just creating a script that sends off an email. We actually want to integrate this into the Task app. So when a user creates an account, they get a welcome email welcoming them to the application. And you could use that as a way to start a conversation about what they hope to get out of your product. And if they cancel their account, we'll follow up, sending them one last email, maybe asking them why they've chosen to cancel and what we could have done to have kept them as a customer. So let's go ahead and see what this would take. Now the account.js file is gonna stay in place. The only difference is that we're gonna set up functions that get called elsewhere in the application and that's how emails will get sent. So for example, in the routers file, we have the user router. This first route runs when a user signs up. What we wanna do is call a function defined in account.js that actually sends an email to that new user. The text of the email will include their name and the to value will be the email address they registered with. So to get started, that means we don't wanna have just a call to send sitting at the root of this file. I still wanna load the library in and I do wanna set up the API key. The next thing I'm gonna do though is create a function which I'll eventually export from the file. So right here, a new constant, send welcome email. We're going to set it up as an arrow function. And right here, we can go ahead and accept a couple of arguments. Now I could take the entire user document in as a whole, or I could accept the properties I need as individual arguments, such as email and name. Either approach would get the job done. I'll go ahead and have two separate arguments. One for the email address of the new user and the second one for their name. Now, what do we wanna do in the function body? Well, I'll use sgmail.send to send an email off. We're going to provide the object just like we did before and we'll start off with who the email is going to. It's going to the user that just created the account. So I'll provide that as the value for two. And then after that, we have from. Now in the long run, you're gonna to wanna to get a custom domain, associate that with your account and use an email address at that domain. For now though, anything works. I'll just use andrew at mead.io. Next up, we wanna provide a subject. So right here, we can have the subject property set up and we can pick whatever we want. I could say as an example, thanks for joining in or welcome to the app or whatever makes the most sense for you. Then down below, we'll go ahead and set up our text. If we wanted to, we could also choose to set up an HTML version to send right here. Let's go ahead and set the text version equal to, and we're going to inject the user's name right inside of the message. Now for this, we'll use the ES6 template string feature. So that is an opening and closing back tick you can find that key to the left of the one key on your keyboard and we'll provide our message. I'm gonna say something like welcome to the app followed by their name. So I'll just say something like name for the moment. We'll actually inject that in a second. And then after that, I could say, let me know how you get along with the app. Perfect. So just a little message welcoming them. Now, when we use template strings, when we use these back ticks, we can easily inject variables right inside. So it's just an alternative way to concatenate strings. Right here, I'm going to remove the placeholder and we're actually going to inject the value stored in the name variable right here. To do that in a template string, that is the dollar sign curly braces and in here, we can reference name perfect. Now it's important to note that we can only use this syntax in template strings with those back ticks. You're not gonna be able to do this with single or double quotes. Now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and export the function so it can actually be used by other files down below. I'm gonna set module.exports equal to an object. And the reason I'm setting it equal to an object is that we're gonna export multiple functions from this file, and this is the way to export multiple things. We export an object with various properties on it. For us, we're gonna set one up called send welcome email, 
and the value is coming from a variable with the same name so I can take advantage of the ES6 shorthand syntax. Now, we actually wanna go into user.js, load that function in, and call it inside of this route so the new user gets that email. Right here, let's go ahead and require it. I'm gonna create a new constant, and I'm gonna use ES6 destructuring to grab send welcome email off of the object that I just set up, and then I'll use require to load it in. That's dot dot to get out of the routers folder, followed by forward slash emails, then forward slash account. Perfect. Now we can call this with the email and the name wherever we'd like, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right here after the user is saved. So I'll call send welcome email, providing the email address. We know that a user has one because validation just worked when we saved it up above. That is user.email followed by their name, user.name, and there we go. Now we have a system for sending every new user a welcome email to their inbox. Now let's test this out. And to test this out, we actually have to interact with our application. So I have to start the server up. That is npm run dev. Now, when we start the server up, no emails are getting sent. It's only when a new user signs up. So let's head over to Postman and actually get that done. I'm going to close down all of the open requests I have so far so we can stay nice and organized. Now, this one was the tab for posting to that generic upload route which we actually removed from the app so I can close that down and there's no need to save it. Now I'm gonna go over to create user, but we are gonna change the data. I do not own example.com, so I wouldn't actually get that email. I'm going to sign up with my email address to make sure the welcome email arrives in my inbox. And here I'm using my full name, Andrew Mead, which I would also expect to see as part of the text for that email. Now we can take a, a quick moment to actually send that off using send. Down below, we can see how things went. It seemed to have go gone well. I have my 201 created status. Let's head over to my inbox in the browser and see if I have the welcome email. Now, once again, because you don't have a custom domain set up, there's a decent chance that showing up in your spam folder. Right here though, I'm getting thanks for joining in and if I crack it open, I can see, welcome to the app, Andrew Mead. So my name is embedded right inside of there. Let me know how things go with the application. So there we go. This is how we can send emails to the user as they interact with our application. Now in general, we wanna keep all of the logic around sending emails and managing the SendGrid module in its own file. There's no need to do all of that right inside of the router it's much nicer to just call a function that handles all of that behavior for you. Now you might be wondering if this process is asynchronous and it definitely is. Right here, the send method, it actually returns a promise. So we could use async await with that. And then over in the user router, I could await the email being sent before I continue on. There's actually no need to use await here though. We don't need node to actually wait for the send grid server to send a response back. We're just going to send that off to them and the user will get the email in a minute or two when they actually check their email. There's no need to make sure that this completes before they get their status code back. Though once again, send does return a promise so you could set that up if you wanted to. Now, right here on this object, we could also choose to set up an HTML version by specifying that. And if their email client supports HTML, that'll be rendered. So right here, you could use all of the HTML elements you're used to, and you could create a complex email with images and all sorts of other fancy features. Though for the moment, a basic text email is gonna get the job done. And there are actually studies out there that show that text emails from web applications have a higher open and response rate because it feels real. It doesn't feel like some big marketing company is sending you a fancy email. It feels like someone typed something out and sent it to you personally. Obviously that's not the case, but it gives off that sort of effect. Now, if you do own a custom domain and you wanna set that up with the SendGrid service, you can head over to the SendGrid dashboard 
In the left-hand navigation bar, you would go to settings, and then down below, there's a section called sender authentication. This is where you can register a new domain. Now with this, you need to prove you own the domain by changing the DNS records at that domain. And that's going to be a bit different depending on where you're getting your domain through. There are a ton of different domain registrars out there. So you'd need to refer to the specific documentation for your specific DNS management system to figure out how you could change it. And the SendGrid instructions do make that as easy as possible. But this is where you would go when you're ready to create a real application and you have that custom domain you want to set up. For the moment, let's go ahead and wrap this video up with a challenge. It's going to be up to you to figure out how to send an email to a user just when they cancel their account. So when they cancel, we're not going to stop them from canceling, but we will follow up and see if we could have done anything to have kept them as a customer. Right here, I have some challenge comments outlining what I'd like you to do. Right here, it's going to be up to you to send an email to the user on cancellation. So you'll be setting up a new function for sending that email in this file and you'll be exporting it from this file. And like with send welcome email, the new function you create should accept the email and name as arguments down below. You also want to make sure to send the email to that user and include their name in your cancellation email text. You could say something like goodbye followed by their name. Is there anything we could have done to have kept you on board or something like that? The choice of the text is yours. Now, once you have the function in place, sending the email, you want to make sure to call it inside of the route where users can delete their account. And finally, you want to test your work. So just after someone's account is successfully removed, you'll call that new function, then go over to postman, delete the account, Check your inbox and make sure you see the cancellation email showing up. Take some time to knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and get to it with step number one. We want to create a new function right here in account.js. So a new constant, I can call this one something like send cancellation email. Now you could have chosen a different name for the function. The specifics are not important as long as it's working for you. And right here, we want to make sure we accept the email and the name once again. And down below, we want to make sure we export this function. All we're going to do is add it as another property on the object we're exporting. So send cancellation email. And then up above, we can go through the process of actually calling sgmail.send. I'm going to call that function and provide the necessary data. So two, once again, will come from the email parameter up above. And from will be the same from address I've been using so far in this section, andrew at mead.io. Next up, we're going to have the subject for this one. And we could say something like, sorry to see you go. Next up, we'll set up the text and we want to include their name in that one as well. So I'll use a template string once again. And right here, I could say something like goodbye, comma, followed by their name. Then the next sentence, I hope to see you back sometime soon. Perfect. So now that we have this in place, we can go ahead and make sure that this function gets called at the point in our API code where users' accounts are deleted. Right here, I'm going to start by removing the challenge comments down below as we're done with this file. I'm going to save account.js so all of this code actually runs. And over in user.js, we're going to grab the other thing from this object. So I'm going to continue to build out my object destructuring to grab send cancellation email. Perfect. Last up, we have to call this function at the correct point in the code. Down below, we have our router.delete call where user profiles are removed. Just after the user is removed, I'll call send cancellation email. I'm going to pass in the email. That is request.user.email, and I'll pass in the name as well, request.user.name. 
Now we can go ahead and save user.js, making sure all of our edited files are saved. And we're actually going to delete that user account from Postman and make sure we do see that email in our inbox. So over here, the last thing I did was create the account. Down below, I'm gonna go to delete user and fire that off. Right here, it did seem to work correctly. Let's go ahead and check our inbox and make sure we have that new cancellation email. So over in Google Chrome for me, I'll be heading back over to my inbox. And right here, I do see, sorry to see you go. Down below, we have our text message. Goodbye, Andrew Mead. I hope to see you back sometime soon. So using these two emails, we can start a conversation with our users as they use the application. We can use this one to maybe figure out why they're joining, what features they're looking for, and we can use this one to figure out why they've left. And users would actually be able to reply to that email to start a conversation with you. And this is something you definitely want to allow for as getting feedback from your users is obviously ideal. Now that we have this in place, what I wanna focus on is how we can better protect the API keys in our project. Right now, we have API keys directly in our JavaScript file, and this is typically a bad idea. In the next lesson, we'll talk about why it's typically a bad idea, and we'll also talk about how we can improve the setup, removing the actual API key values from our JavaScript code. I'm excited to get to that, so let's jump in to the next one.